Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dan Franklin, and I'm welcoming to the SIS Education Webinar, our continuing series that we do monthly. And this month, we are working uh, to show you the e-requester by paperless business solutions. And the title is Purchasing Requisitions AP Workflows for Cost Controls. Welcome, everybody. Before we get into the webinar on e-requester, we're going to just introduce you to SIS. SIS was founded in 1996. Our headquarters are in Duluth, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. And we deliver business solutions that help project and service-driven companies unify their business processes and applications across the enterprise, thus delivering better visibility and efficiency. We focus on mostly project-based companies and service-based companies. That's in construction, general contracting, and specialty contracting like engineering, architecture, oil and gas, energy and services, and professional services government contractors. We, as your Microsoft Dynamics partner, can offer many different services. We are full service. We can do current state assessments, requirements and fit gap analysis, business process analysis, custom application development, software design development and deployment. We can also do deployments for hub and spoke rollouts for larger companies. We do both ERP and CRM implementation and we are uh, very good at both on-premise and cloud deployments for both ERP and CRM. Why partner with SIS? We are a Microsoft Gold certified partner. We have over 20 years of experience using Dynamics SL and serving Dynamics SL customers. We have a dedicated support and customer care team. We also have a very experienced partner consulting and development team. We have many, many folks here at SIS that are familiar with Microsoft Dynamics SL. We understand your industry best practices and the software in order to bridge the gap between business and technology. In other words, we know how to make the software work for you and your business. And we also have broad industry-focused solutions, offering for Dynamics SL, Dynamics CRM, and Dynamics 365 and SharePoint that we have built for these industries to further enhance uh, the product over and above its out-of-the-box solutions. At any time, if you uh, have any technical difficulties, please email Debbie, Debbie PV at dpv at sism.com, and she will work in the background to help get you going. All phone lines are muted, so you can go ahead and make some noise, and we won't hear you. <laughs> please hold your questions until the Q&A session at the end. And please view this in full screen mode. Uh, our presenter is going to be showing some details, and if you have it in a small little screen, you won't be able to see those details. So please maximize the screen now. We are going to be recording the webinar, so if you miss something, just let us know, and we'll give you a link to it at the end. I'm going to turn this now over to Eric Osborne with eRequester, and he's going to show you how uh, we can best do intelligent automation using their product. Switch it over to you, Eric. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Can you, Dan, you guys see it? Yep. Okay. Um, thank you, SIS, for putting on this webinar today. We're really excited to uh, partner with you on this. We've been partners for many years and super excited about 2019 and just continue to build a, a partnership with you and your team over there. As Dan mentioned earlier, my name is Eric Osborne. I am the channel manager and software sales consultant with eRequester. Uh, coming on the line a little bit later will uh, we'll be Heung as well, and he'll be putting you through a demo we'll talk about a little bit. So eRequester, eRequester has been around since 1999, um, been developing spin management software, um, specifically designed for small and mid-sized enterprises. We work uh, across all different types of industries, um, pretty much anyone who's looking to get control over their internal spending, um, to save money on purchasing, manage their compliance, and accelerate accounting, we work with. We've been a, a Microsoft Gold partner for close to 20 years, uh, and so we have a lot of, lot of deep insight when it comes to how our solution works with Excel and other Dynamics or Microsoft products. E-requester has been utilized by over 850 
uh, companies and growing. We have more than 100,000 users utilizing the system right now. So the agenda today, I'm going to start today with a quick presentation. Um, the slides are, are short. They're going to go really quickly. And so we're going to move through the presentation. And at the end, Hyung, one of our sales engineers, will take you through just a quick overview to show you how the system works when it comes to SL. Um, and approval routing. So let's get going. One second. So eRequester is a spend management solution that helps companies strike a balance between automation efficiency on one hand and control over the spending on the other hand. It allows you to automate your requests and get approval routing while actively keeping track of those activities in your system in real time. This gives you the ability to have accountability when it comes to your purchases within your company. Okay. Sorry, did I skip one? Okay. It's uncommon it's typical that clients come to us and they're pretty frustrated we work with a lot of different accountants uh people in procurement and the finance department and typically they're coming from a manual based or manual or paper-based requisitioning process and it's a lot of challenges that we've identified over the years that that are that take away from employees being able to be the best at their job to be able to do the most strategic work for your company. So some of the challenges that we see are paper-based requisitioning, old and slow processing, approval bottlenecks, which is a big one, um, manual purchase orders, uncontrolled rogue spending, frustrated staff, um, slow expense reverse, reimbursements, out of compliance. And then one, one thing that we always hear is that it's just never enough time. They spend so much time uh, on the AP, in the AP department, they spend so much time, you know, entering things into SL or their ERP system. It's uncommon for them to even have one day a week where they just been doing data entry and entering different invoices and things into SL. By adding eRequester, it allows you to save a lot of time on those different processes, which we'll talk about in detail. So let's, let's talk about how you save time. So by adding a by adding a spend management solution, you're gonna reduce, I'm sorry, replace your older inefficient systems. So by adding e-request or automated procurement solution, you reduce the time to process your request by by allowing the system to automatically notify the people that need to approve things. When when someone goes in to make a request, it automatically based on the workflow that you've determined. It'll automatically notify people what you have something to approve. It'll send them an email. It'll continue to notify them based on however the criteria is set up so that you can always, so that, that the system will continue to work for you when you're not watching it. A lot of times when I'm talking to people, they have to have someone babysit this process, right? To make sure that each of that the requisition or the PO or the invoice is, is going through the proper channels, making sure that that person is going to improve it at a timely basis. The system takes all of that out, out uh, for you and does all that for you. Not only does it do that, it allows you to communicate with your different team members. So if someone needs to make a change or they need to um, add something to it, you can automatically send those things back with a note and uh, it'll automatically route it back to the people that you wanted to route it to and continue to keep a keep a list of all the different activities and notes that are um, associated with that different request and then lastly is automating your your approval workflow as i mentioned earlier having a solution like this gives you an opportunity to set up a workflow ahead of time and then it takes all the guesswork out of it when someone goes to make a request, it automatically routes it to the people that it needs to be and continues to notify them until that request is done. A Aberdeen group, a uh, survey for the Aberdeen group said that in terms of time, e-procurement drives out days out of the process from just 
over a week to just two days when it comes to creating a purchase order. So we know it's gonna save you some time, but it also saves you money. Having a system like eRequester that integrates with SL gives you an opportunity to see your budgets in real time. Gives you an opportunity to implement budget control so that when someone goes to make a request, it'll automatically let you know if you are going over budget, if you're under budget, if you have, if you're close to being under your budget, which gives you a lot more insights, give you a lot more decision-making tools when it comes to your budgets that are living in SL. It saves times as well as potential errors. So as we know, one of the big challenges in a paper-based or manual requisition uh, process is potential errors, right? Human error is a big, big, big issue when it comes to these different um, uh, processes. So by having a system that automatically routes things for you that have geo codes that are tied to different departments or tied to different people or requests, it saves time because people don't have to go and look for that information, but also they, you don't have someone sending out a request with the wrong GL code or those type of things. The system automatically populates different uh, fields that are needed for that transaction. And then lastly, again, it improves your spending visibility. So one of the best things about having a requisition system all the way to, to pay uh, NSL gives you an opportunity so that when someone makes a request, again, it, it'll automatically read your budgets in SL, so it'll notify you ahead of time. But not only would it notify you that you're going over budget based on your accruals and your variances, what it also can do is let you know how much commitment that you have. So on all the outstanding POs, you know that I'm committed to this, and if I do this transaction, I may go over budget for it. It gives you complete visibility into all your internal purchases. By automating purchase orders, you also save a lot of money on those purchase orders. We've identified that an average purchase order can take someone over uh, two weeks to actually uh, create. Based on time and, and the time that is, uh, someone has to sit and babysit that process, Automating your purchase orders, the cost can go down from, on average, $114 to about $31.50 per purchase order, based on a survey done by the Aberdeen Group. So without even knowing it, by automating, you're going to save some valuable time, which ultimately turns into dollars that hit your bottom line right away. Another area we love to focus on with our solution is accountability and control. The system gives companies accountability and control over all the internal purchases. One of the big things that we talk about is by having an easy solution that everyone is used to you doing or are used to using, I should say, it will make it easy for people when they want to request things. A lot of times in the when people want to request things and it becomes a long process or they need something right away, it allow because they need it right away, they'll go around the system. By having an automated system that takes all the guesswork out and makes it easy for people, they can go in and make an easy request and I'll have to think about it and they know it's gonna get back to them fast. So one of the things that you don't have to worry about is stall requests or loss requests. A lot of times in a paper-based or manual-based uh, requisition system, if someone's out of, out of office or those, it just sits on their desk and no one knows exactly what it is. And even if that person is babysitting, what happens? That person's not there to tell you, well, it should go to Mary or John when I'm not in town. By having, uh, having an automated system, when that person's go out of town, they can actually put out of office and the system automatically route it to the next person in line. The system intelligence and workflow allows you to, over time, continue to collect data so that you can continue to get intelligence on and analytics on all your different purchases so that you can start making insightful decisions with your purchases going forward. And then the tracking and auditing trail. For compliance, not only that, when, you, when someone wants to find a purchase order in a manual-based or paper-based requisition 
process. It, it takes days to find something. You have to go through paper. You have to go through each line, those things. By having an automated e-requester or automated spin management solution, someone can go in and type in exactly a PO and find exactly who, where that PO is, who's, who needs to approve it, and, and, and where is it at in that process at any time. They can also find out any information if you needed to go back and for auditing purposes and you needed to know who originated that request or did you have the proper receipts or paperwork aligned. All of those different activities will be logged within the e-requested solution for you so that you can go in at any time and check those out and, and make a decision based on that information that you have in front of you. Notifications and communications, which are always great for making decisions. The notifications and communication comes to you when you're on your email, or if you're out of the office or in office, on your tablet, you can view it from anywhere in the, in the world. As long as you have a web browser, you can go in and check your uh, approvals or check your communication to see exactly where your, your PO is or your invoice at any time. Survey done by the Aberdeen Group said that authorized or Maverick spending drops by 51% when you add an automated e-procurement solution. That right there alone, if you were to save 50% on just your internal purchases, those things directly hit your bottom line. So there's this balance between automation and control. As you look through the process, as we look at from a request to approve, to purchase order, to order, receiving an invoice, requesting a payment approval, to paying, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, areas for something to break down. When you automate this, automate this stuff, you take all the guesswork out. No one has to think about where it's at. You always have something, a partner right there with you that ultimately can help you make decisions and make make your life easier, whether you are an accountant, whether you are a finance person, where you are in procurement, where you are if you are making requests, or if you are just uh, dealing with purchase orders and vendors, or if you are actually paying bills in the AP process. Simplify your process without sacrificing control. So when we come in and we work with you, one of the things that we're going to try and do is give you the balance of simplifying, giving you more efficient processes by automating things so that no one has to think about it based on however you wanted this set up. So with that said, when it comes to automation and when it comes to approval routing, we allow you to route things based on the dollar amount, on the department, on the on the user, on the GL code, all these different features gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to workflow and approval routing so that each, each request can have its, unique, its own unique approval workflow for depending on the department or the actual user or a lot of different other criteria. What it does is just give you a lot of flexibility without sacrificing any control. So, when coming to us, one of the things that we try to do is our, we have a lot of different features within e-requests. So it's really about your business and what makes sense for you. So things like custom routing, budget control, punch out, mobile approval, request for quote, expense management, business intelligence are all things that you could start off with or not, however you want. You could start off with something small and it's a solution that can scale with, as you're company continues to grow and as your needs become a lot more complex. When it comes to workflow, eRequester is rated one of the top uh, ease of use when it comes to workflow. And as you can see on the screen, it's really easy to set it up. When it comes to requests, it's really about what do you want the request to do how do you want to route it to? Is this, what type of request is it? And if based on that request, do you want it to go to this person or that person? It's very easy based on a simple criteria on 
if this is true, then you do this. If this is false, you do this. So it's really easy to set up. Our technicians work with you and your team to set that up really easy for you. We talked a lot about budgets earlier, but I wanted you to see that, as you can see with eRequester, a lot of times if you're just using SL or an ERP system, you have a lot of insight on your budget when it comes to your actual things that are spent, that are bought, and then what is left as far as that with your variance on those, those things that are already bought. E-requested gives you an opportunity to, to talk about your budget, not only from a, what you've already bought stand for, but what is outstanding. Do you have any purchase orders coming up this month that have been bought that have, you haven't paid yet? So that if anything else comes in that month, you can always make those decisions, right? Based on real-time information directly from SL that lives in e-requested. And then these days, we're all on the go. As we mentioned earlier, out of office, uh, out of office delegates, those things can really slow down that um, process when it comes to automation and workflow. And so eRequested gives you access to mobile. You'll get a, a request or you'll get a notification on your mobile phone or tablet when you're at the gym, when you're at a restaurant, and a person can easily look at their phone and see all the information pertinent to that transaction to make so that they can make a decision to approve it, they can reject it, they can actually ask for more information and they can do that all directly from their phone. If they want to go inside, they can also from their phone hit a link in the email and go inside of their uh, actual e-requester into their dashboard and, and look at things in more detail as well. So. Having e-requests, it gives you a lot more control, but again, it gives you that flexibility so that your approvers don't have to sit around and no one has to babysit this. The system will take all of that guesswork out and make sure that it's routed to the right people in the right time. These days, as, we, as companies are continuing to get more complex, one of the things that we're very big on is business intelligence. By having, by utilizing a e-requested system over the course of a year or two years, it gives you a lot of insight as to all your spending so that you can see trends and things and make informed decisions. We have an enhanced business intelligence search and reporting tool that allows you to search using keyword requests by, uh, by the request name, by the purchase order number, request number and date. You can search using requisitions, the PO, the receiving and voucher details, or you could just do a quick search on parameters like delay requests, templates, and un unpaid requests. The system gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of opportunities to get reports that can help you when it's making those decisions going forward. Ease of use. So eRequester has a great dashboard that's very easy to use. It has all the information you need uh, to make an informed decision, such as your rec number and the, the vendors, um, who who requ or the request type, who is actually waiting for, uh, who approved it, and who originated the request, along with the actual amount that the request is for. This gives people gives your employees visibility over all the requests that are pending approval at any time a person with the pending approval tab or who has that um, those rights can go in and look at the different outstanding requisitions that they have to approve and then make actions on those things. And then last thing we talked about is, is accountability and having an active log of your actual real-time request. So within e-requests, you get an audit trail and request history. It shows you who and when created, who and when they created a requisition, who submitted it, when they approved it, et cetera, with comments. As you can see, based on this example, Joe made the request. Uh, it went to Bob, who said it was fine. Then it went to Jane, and then it went to Bill. It, once Bill approved it, it created a PO, and it got a PO number. And from that, he was able to email that PO to a supplier from Newcastle Gold, 
the invoice then came in and was approved and matched with the PO and Bill at the end said that was paid yesterday. The system took care of all those things, routed to every single person, including gave you an option to be able to email it to your vendor and it's all in there and it keeps a track of it all. So if someone, if for some reason Joe needed to find out, hey, who who is uh who's approving this, he can go in at any time and find out. If Bob wanted to know, hey, did it, did that get approved? He can go in and find out. So it gives you all of that uh, visibility. The key takeaways from today is that working with a e-requester or a spin management solution allows you to save time, save money by automating, as well as getting the most out of your dynamic SL with real-time integration. So thank you guys. My colleague, Hyung, I'm gonna change it over, uh, switch it over to him, and he's gonna show you a little bit about e requests. Thank you for your time today. can't hear you, Hyung. Hello, can you can you hear me? Can you? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, I hope everything is, I'm just gonna hide this part. I'm gonna, so uh, it looks, uh, everything looks good on your screen? Okay. I think I, I hope I, I made it full screen. All right. So. Um, I think Eric covered a lot of details in his presentation. So what I'm going to do today is uh, at a very high level, show you what e-requester looks like. And there are three main areas that e-requester can help you automate and streamline. Um, the first area is the requisitions and purchase orders. The second area is the invoice and AP automation. And third area is kind of about expense uh, reporting and management. Um, to tell you, eRequester integrates with Dynamics SL in two main areas, uh, to the purchase order module in SL, as well as the AP module in SL. And eRequester reads most of the data from um, SL, like, uh, the vendors, the items, the GL accounts, um, it, all the pertinent and important information uh, directly out of Excel in real time. So I'm going to log in as a username. Uh, actually, I'm going to log in as myself um, with my username and password. And I'll be an initiator in this case, a, a requester. And the first example I'm going to walk through is a, a purchase requisition. So one of the nice features in eRequester is that you can set up templates for those items that you order frequently. And you can set up as many templates as you want. As you can see, I have uh, three templates. And one of them is an office supplies template. And if I take a look at this template, it has all these uh, items predefined with the cost, the vendor, who you wanna buy from, the request type, and my department, and maybe tax if it's appropriate. And again, um, a lot of this information is actually being pulled from your Dynamics SL in real time. And if I want to request some of these items, all I have to do is go down here, click copy, and then the system will turn that template into a new request. As you can see, that template just got turned into a new request, 5849, a new number has been assigned for tracking purpose, and all the items are preloaded here. So all I have to do as a user is just enter the quantities of items that I want to request. So I'll just uh, request a couple of items here, and when I click Save and Continue, you will see that this new request only has 
those two items that I've just entered the quantities. So basically, it drops items with zero quantities. And one of the key features, as uh, Eric mentioned, is you can actually check your budgets um, at any given moment. And the system gives you a warning if the item or the items is going to put that GL budget over. And as you can see, this item description turned red, the GL account number turned red, and there's a red exclamation point. That means that this item is going to put this GL budget over. And when I click this GL account number, th this is uh, what Eric showed you in his um, PowerPoint. Basically, we are looking at the GL budgets directly from your SL and comparing the actual, the committed and pending amount, total amount to the budget and, and giving you the variance by period. So this is a real-time budget report uh, directly out of your SL GL budgets. So now there are a couple of things uh, that can happen. One, you can actually do a hard stop here if a, a GL budget is going to go over. Or you can let the users continue and let the approvers or the reviewers down the road uh, make a decision whether to approve or reject. In this example, the system is going to let me uh, continue. So another nice thing here is that you can actually attach any kind of supporting documents to your transaction. So I can go to my folder somewhere and maybe attach a quotation or product image, product specification, whatever it is that you want to associate with this item. Um, you can attach it and then the screen will refresh and as you can see, a document has been attached for this item and you can attach multiple documents. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and click save and continue. And the system will automatically determine who the approvers are based on the rules you have set up in your company in the system. And, and the most basic rule is based on dollar values. So the authority levels, the hierarchy. Uh, in your company. And because this is only a $370 request for office supplies for this department, it only requires the department manager John's approval. And that's it. So it is a very easy to use, very um, uh, simple uh, to do your new request using a template. And when I submit this request, the system will automatically send an email notification to the next approver. And in this case, there's only one approver, John. So when John receives an email, John can log in to the system as himself. And when he clicks a hyperlink in the email, he'll be taken directly to that transaction. Now I'll show you what the email looks like when it arrives. It's going through the email server, so it takes a few seconds to uh, get into your inbox. But as you can see, I'm logged in as John, the manager, and I'm reviewing this new request, and I can also take a look at the attachment if I need to. And uh, there it is, the email just arrived. So if I open the email that John received, uh, this is an email asking for his approval uh, for uh, $370 from Hyung, from this department, for these items. And our email approval module will let approvers uh, directly approve or reject from the email. So they don't even have to log into the system. They can simply click approve or reject or request more info. But if they want to log into the system for some reason, they can click this hyperlink right here. And when they do, they will be taken directly to this new request, 5849. And again, um, here are all the options when they log in. Of course, they can approve or reject it, but Another option that you can give approvers is the right to edit the transaction themselves. Instead of sending it back to the requester or requesting more info, they can simply click edit and change whatever is on this transaction if you give them the right to change. Um, also, they can put whatever comment they want for communication purpose. So John just put the uh, comment there and says uh, it's fine although over budget or something uh, to communicate to the team. And then when he clicks approve, you will see that this request has been approved. And uh, I, 
another email will go out to uh, the person who will create the PO. I think in this case, uh, I can create my own PO. So as you can see, John was the only approver in this case, and the requester uh, will get an email notification that his request has been approved. And then if you let the, uh, each department or, or the requester to create their own PO, they, will, they can log into the system and come to the Create PO tab. And you see the one at the bottom here is the one that just got approved by John. And when I log in and come to this transaction, and when I go to the request history, the system uh, captures all the actions on this transaction from beginning to end. So it date and time stamp as uh, Eric showed you in his PowerPoint. So this was created and submitted by me, approved by my manager, John, with his comment. So we even captured his comment there. And the status is approved. So now I can simply click this Create PO button. And the system will uh, pick the next PO number from SL if you are using the PO module in SL uh, from the approved request. So if I click this PO number, uh, here is the PO form generated in eRequester. And if you are using the PO module in SL, eRequester will post this PO into SL's PO module automatically. As soon as this form is created, this purchase order information has been posted into SL PO module automatically in real time. And one of the options from this screen is that you can email out this PO from eRequester or you can send out the PO from SL. So you have uh, different options. So we've just uh, gone through requisition to PO and if you want to receive the items in eRequester, uh, you can click this receiving button and when the goods come in, you can highlight the transaction and click receive and then you can enter the receipt information so when i click receive uh, this is the today's receipt date and if all the items came in you can simply click this box that says receive remaining and the system will automatically update the full quantity and amount and when you save this receipt the system will automatically generate another transaction on the receipt history. And as you can see, Hyung just received all the items and there's none remaining to receive. And you can even attach a copy of the packing slip uh, from this screen. So I can go to uh, my folder again and, and attach a copy of the scanned packing slip to this transaction. And when I close, you see that there's a paper clip icon here that tells me that there's a packing slip attached here. And the final step in this example will be when the invoice comes in. So when the invoice comes into your accounting department, for example, uh, an AP user can log in to the system and then they can uh, search for the PO that just got uh, placed and, and the goods received. And when they uh, get the PO, from the search result, they can highlight it and click receive. And this AP person will have this but button called invoice. Now they can enter the invoice and match it with the receipt and the PO. So you can actually do a 3A match in the system. And you can enter whatever the invoice number and the date. And all the items appear from your purchase order. And if everything matches up, you can match it with the PO, uh, the receipt 1913, and then you see all the amount and uh, the quantities get updated automatically. And when I click Save Invoice, the system generates another transaction that this invoice has been entered by this happy AP person, and it has been matched with the receipt and the PO, and you can attach a copy of the uh, scanned invoice to complete this process. And when I upload it, the, a copy of the invoice has been attached. Now I've just completed three-way match with the invoice and the receipt and the PO. And the nice thing 
from this screen is that you can cross-reference the invoice, the receipt, the PO, and the requisition all from this screen. And then if eRequester is integrated with uh, SL's AP module, then there'll be a button here that says post to accounting. And simply clicking that button will post the voucher, unposted voucher into SL's uh, AP module, all in real time. So that's an example of a requisition to PO to invoice matching. Now I'm going to uh, do a couple of quick examples showing you uh, those two areas, uh, the AP and invoice automation and the uh, expense reimbursement and reporting. So in this example, I click new request again. Now, instead of a standard purchase request, request type, I'm going to choose a non-PO invoice, or it could be a PO invoice if, if the invoice is uh, uh, for existing PO. But if for those non-PO invoices, all you have to do is enter, you know, whatever it is, uh, maybe invoice for utilities. And then you can enter the invoice number again and the date. And when you click save, continue, uh, the system will ask you who you're going to pay for these services. So you can simply start typing the vendor who you're gonna pay uh, and maybe Acme services. And these vendors are actually coming from your SL vendor list when it's integrated. And uh, maybe payment terms if that's required. And then this is really for services. And maybe it's for a $1,500 service. And what GL account is it, is it being charged to? So you can start typing the name or the description of the GL account and it's pulling uh, the list from your SL GL accounts. And that's it. And when you click save and continue, basically, it takes you to the review screen again. Here, you can attach a copy of the contract or the service agreement here if it's required. And then you can choose that. Uh, I don't have a contract. So I'm just going to attach a quote. But just think of this as, as a contract or the service agreement here. And then when you click Save and Continue, you can route this through the um, invoice approval process in your company. So first you will go to my manager and then you will go to the general ma manager for the approval of this invoice. So in a quick example, this was an uh, invoice or AP approval process in e-request. And once this goes through the approval process and is fully approved, uh, e-requester will post this voucher into a sales AP module so that you can pay the vendor out of your SL. So this was a quick example of a, an invoice approval and automation. Now, the final example I'm going to do is an expense a reimbursement or expense management. So another request type I have here is a, a, a one called expense reimbursement. And when I choose that request type, you see the UI changed a little bit and maybe you are entering a, a travel a expense request. So maybe trip to New York from me on this date and when I click next, the system will let me enter different types of expenses like transportation, accommodation, meals. And it makes it easy for you to enter uh, different types of uh, expenses. So this one is transportation. So maybe it's a flight uh, and you know the, the type is airplane. But of course, there are different types of uh, modes of uh, transportation like train and car rental and taxi. And you know, as long as the, the some of these fields are blue, those are optional fields. But any field that shows up as red, those are the required fields. So you have to enter. So maybe um, you're entering a GL that you're going to charge this expense against and then enter the amount. And then you can attach a copy of the receipt right here. So you can, again, and you can do this from your mobile phone. If you, uh, 
you know, took a photo of your receipt, then you can attach that receipt from your mobile phone to this transaction. Okay, so I've just uploaded a receipt here. And as you can see, it shows up here. And when I save this item, it captures this transportation expense item on the item summary. And just to show you one more example, I'm going to this accommodations tab, and then it will ask me to enter maybe a hotel that I stayed. And uh, all these fields are optional, but you can make any field uh, mandatory if you want. Uh, again, you know, you can choose the jail account you are charging to, and you can attach the receipt of this hotel here. And the payment types, you can make it reimbursable to the employee or, you know, pay directly to the vendor or credit card. You know, you can set up different types of payments here. Choose one and then just enter the quantity and the amount. And when I save this item, there should be two, uh, you know, expense items there. And when you are ready, click submit and continue and the system will automatically determine who the approvers are based on the rules you have set up. In this case, it only requires my manager John's approval for this uh, expense reimbursement request. So in a nutshell, those are the three kind of major categories of um, you know, uh, spend management that you can uh, process through eRequester. And as I mentioned, at the end of this processes, uh, eRequester will post the voucher into your SL AP module all automatically in real time. So that's kind of what I had prepared uh, for today's demo. Okay. Okay, I think at this point, do we have any questions? Okay, well, I don't think we have any questions. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, but thank you all for joining us today. Really excited that I was able to give you an overview of eRequester and some of the highlighted areas where we are uh, able to save you time and money and give you a lot of controls when it comes to your internal purchases. Um, should you need anything or you want to get a more detailed demo of eRequester, we would love to hear back from you. Make sure you get with your uh, your rep from SIS and have them get in touch with us and schedule that demo. We're excited and excited to be working with SIS this year in 2019. Have a great day.